I'm Mike Mistel. I'm the Social Studies Department Chair at Lakeland Union High School in Monaco, Wisconsin. My guest today is Carol Amor, and I've known Carol a long time in various capacities, but Carol is with the First Nations Traveling Resource Center, and Carol has brought a number of materials by and about Native American people and authors, and this episode is focusing on the middle school level, grades 6, 7, and 8. So Carol, what would you recommend in classroom for middle school level? Well, I've brought quite a selection of books along today. There are many, many more books out there than besides the ones that I brought. Mm -hmm. But I brought some today that I think will really pique your interest and, okay. and uh, pique uh, the teacher's interest. Yeah, I see that you have some that are focused on people, the biographies. Yes, And yes. that's what really uh, I enjoyed as a social studies teacher. Great. Well, and I think these biographies, I'm so excited to share these books with you. I also want to shout out to the uh, Wisconsin Indian Education Association, who are the sponsors of the First Nations Traveling Resource Center. Okay. And this is a new series, relatively new. Um, it's called the Native Trailblazers series. And it's, it's fantastic because there are short biographies, wonderful for social studies class, also wonderful for literacy classes. Uh, what I'm real excited about with this series of books is it shows people today making real positive contributions um, in throughout the United States and the world. Yes. And they're broken into to various categories. Uh, if you've listened to any of the other segments, you've heard us talk a little bit about Joseph Ruchek and Louise Erdrich, and they show up, oh, not yeah. surprisingly, in this uh, uh, book about uh, Native writers, Voices of Power. Okay. So uh, again, we're not talking about the past, we're talking about today and major contributions that are going on today. So mm -hmm. I'd like to share the Native writers, Voices of Power. Um, and these are very nicely produced as well. Uh, they, they hook you in. Um, the, each biography is relatively short, so you know it's easy to use in the classroom. This one is called Native Men of Courage that same series and of course there's Native Women of Courage as yes. well. Mm -hmm. um, Native Elders sharing their wisdom Okay. and these hit on uh, members from uh, uh, the more than 500 tribes in the nation. Uh, many from the Woodlands tribes, many from Wisconsin but from all over. Uh, this one is Native Musicians. Okay and I see that these four books have a title here called the Native Trailblazer series. Right. And so that, there's a number of volumes to this series. Yes, there are, and they keep producing more of them. Okay. So, so it's great. And we'll, we'll have uh, information on the screen later showing uh, where you can get these books. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I, uh, to make it helpful for you to, for you to get them. Mm -hmm. And of course, as I said, there's Native Women of Courage. Um, I'd just like to point out in this particular book, and this is, it's so timely right now because, of, of course, uh, you know, there's there's so much interest in and concern about the environment at this time, um, and you know there have been so many issues recently, from Standing Rock to the Back Forty Mine in Menominee to mining issues coming up in Oneida County yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, one of the biographies in here is just super meaningful. It's about Winona LaDuke, okay. um, and I've, I've had the um, the great privilege of uh, getting to meet. Winona LaDuke and share some time with her. Um, so it, it just excites me that, you know, this is this is so contemporary. It's today and it's people who are doing things and making a difference today. Mm -hmm. So I want to share that one with you as well. Then moving right along to um, a book by Winona LaDuke. And so this this is very recent. It's a it's a very new book, uh, the Winona the Winona LaDuke Chronicles stories from the front lines in the battle for environmental justice. So uh, again, you know, we've talked about that, you know, before, uh, uh, Mike, about, um, you, you know, how these books don't just fit in with literacy and don't just fit in with, with social studies. Mm -hmm. Science, you yeah. know, we have, we have science here. We have, right. And we have math, we have, so I, I really want to highly recommend this book. Yeah, and Act 31, that was really its goal, is to include discussion of Native American topics, not just in the social studies or uh, certain or in literature class, but those can go any place in the curriculum. 
That's right, exactly. And I, I think some of the books we have here are real good examples of how you can, how you can do that. Yeah. Um, this next one that I'd like to share with you um, fits right into our state. Uh, this is a book done by Misty Cook, um, uh, Misty Cook Davids. It's called The Medicine Generations. And Misty um, is a, a young woman, I'm, to me, young woman, <laughs> a young woman living and working in Stockbridge, Muncie, in Gresham, Wisconsin. Okay. And she has, has uh, really committed her life to learning about the plants and herbs and medicines mm -hmm. uh, that are important to the Stockbridge, Muncie, Mohican people. So this book, um, again, great for science, um, talks about each of the plants. We have some of them up, up here, too, in okay. this area, yep. uh, uh, up in, in northern Wisconsin, but all around the state. She, she shows the plants, she talks about the plants, she talks about the uses of the plants, um, and um, gets into the traditions, gets into the teachings. Excellent, excellent book. Okay. Then, uh, I'd like to mention, uh, can't go without mentioning Patty Lowe. Uh, Patty, uh, this book w would be great for middle school or high school or adult, um, but she also has a version that's particularly done for fourth grade. Okay. Uh, and uh, they're all, they, they've been published by the Wisconsin Historical Society Press. A shout out to the Wisconsin Historical Society. A lot of good material comes from them. It's a good place to look for resources along with going right to the DPI you know, website and looking at American Indian Studies and seeing uh, what's available right there. Mm -hmm. You'll get the latest, you'll get the newest, uh, you'll get media as well as books. But I can't recommend you know, Patty's work enough. Uh, what Patty makes real clear is that um, you know there are 11 federally recognized tribes in the state, and um, they're, they all have vibrant cultures. Um, they all have made great impact on all of us, mm -hmm. um, everyone in the state and the country. And uh, this is a super resource, just a super resource. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see the impact that tribal people have made in Wisconsin when you just look at the names on our maps. So many uh, so many names of Native American language That's right. that appear on our maps in Wisconsin. That's right, and you'll see some of that talked about in Patty's book, actually. Um, another book that I'd like to share with you, and this is, this is quite new, that's what's so exciting, you know. Um, 25, 30 years ago, it was hard to find uh, good books mm -hmm. uh, by and about uh, Native people but there's been an explosion of good material. And so there's, there's really no excuse for not using it at the classroom because there's lots of good stuff available. Yeah. Now this particular one, this is quite new. Uh, it's called Spirit of the Ojibwe, and it's about the Lakutare LCO tribe okay. uh, near Hayward, Wisconsin, one of the Ojibwe tribes in the state. Mm -hmm. um, this has, um, uh, it's just chalk, full of mini biographies, <laughs> which, which you'll be glad to hear about. Yeah. Um, and there are ties with many of the other tribes as well. One of the bi biographies I'd like to point out uh, is about Ernie St. Germain's mom. Okay. Uh, Ernie has, has been a, a tribal lawyer and an educator and uh, done a great deal of work with uh, Act 31 and Indian education for many, many years. So, uh, And also a good friend of ours. That's right, and also a good friend of ours, so I really would like to uh, uh, do a shout out for that particular okay. book. Sure. Um, another fantastic source for material, fantastic source for material, um, is Great Lakes Intertribal. Um, uh, the Great Lakes uh, Intertribal F uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, which is housed in Bad River, mm -hmm. but is uh, made up of all the Ojibwe tribes, uh, in the state here, but also Minnesota and Michigan, okay. uh, to uphold and help support and uphold treaty rights, Ojibwe treaty rights yep. and sovereignty. So this one, Ojibwe treaty rights, clearly focuses on you know what are the treaties, um, when were they made, uh, they're still in effect today, and, and what what uh, are the details of all of that? Excellent, excellent book, and this one I can't say enough about Mazanai Egan. It's a magazine. It, it comes out uh, seasonally and has 
excellent articles about the resources in the state, what the tribes are doing to maintain those resources, and um, also activities uh, to be done in the classroom. So I, I can't say enough of, about this. And I will be giving that address, uh, that contact for the Fish and Wildlife Commission so that you can get these materials. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are just a few highlights of great materials for middle school students that I'd like to share with you today, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Uh, glyphic materials are, that's a source that I use a lot in my classroom at the high school level, and their materials are very low cost or free. So they are, they, they really do a great job in education and letting people know uh, of why treaty rights exist, uh, the ceded territory and all of those things. So they're always been very uh, useful to me in my classroom as well. Great. Okay, well, Carol, thank you very much. And if you enjoyed this episode on uh, the middle school level, Carol and I have also produced uh, a series of episodes focusing on the uh, primary levels, the intermediate level, and also the high school level. And we also have one episode uh, for guidelines in what to look for in quality materials to use in your classroom. So hopefully teachers will be confident and comfortable with incorporating Native American topics in the classroom, materials that are culturally relevant. Okay, well, Carol, thank you very much. Good, it's good to be here.